hey guys so let's make um herb rice so you're going to add some water in your pot and then going with some coconut milk you can buy store-bought coconut milk like the thin one and then you're going with some herbs pass um, basil parsley thyme rosemary then i added some salt and then stir and allow it to come to a boil then i added my rice this is basil this is basmati rice and basmati rice cooks exactly 12 minutes and your rice is done the idea behind this rice is for you to incorporate more herbs into your rice instead of eating it plainly so ask me questions during questions time later this moi moi order came in so urgently yesterday morning and the only reason why i accepted was because i already had washed beans from change food that's how i quickly started making the moi moi first thing i poured the moi moi into a bowl and i soaked it with water for 10 minutes to have a bad ass moi moi the secret is to using plenty onions and tatashi the tatashi gives your moi moi its color i also went in with some coconut milk so that my moi moi will be juicy creamy and great but you can use just water if you don't want to use the coconut milk then you're going to blend this into a very smooth paste and then i use a wig to mix very well this makes your moi moi to be very fluffy then i went in with one cup of vegetable oil some seasoning and my titus fish you can decide to roast your titus fish or um cook it and do not overly season your moi moi you want your moi moi to just be moderate then you're going to mix your butter very well and then introduce it into your moi moi bowl or moi moi leaf this pack of beans this pack of beans from change x made me 13 bowls of moi moi it also depends on your portioning too i cooked for 45 minutes and my moi moi was ready i sent out 10 bowls of this moi moi to the clients that ordered for it and then i added one moi moi for my new clients yesterday in his food box will you be trying these products from change x let me know if you try this recipe also Start your day with some healthy treats or you can have this as a snack at any time of the day. In this recipe, I'm featuring Greek yogurt from Tesli Healthy Treats. This yogurt is so lush, it is super creamy and the consistency is everything. And also there is no added preservative. To make this yogurt cupcake, I added some of the yogurt into a bowl and then I went in with some full cream milk. And then I mashed two fingers of ripe bananas and set it aside. And then I cut my apples into small chunks. I used the all natural date syrup from Tesli. Then I went in with my apples and my mashed bananas and gave it a very good mix even with the liquid milk added see how the yogurt still holds its thick consistency now i scoop the yogurt into the cupcake bowls then top it off with some more fruits and cashew nuts feel free to add any nuts or fruits that you like you're going to freeze this for a few hours and enjoy get your healthy yogurt from tesla healthy treats and let me know in the comments if you'll try this recipe later fit farmers gather here make we start our day with a healthy drink Featuring Tesli Greek yogurt. If you know, get ground nut use peanut butter. Date syrup from Tesli. You go try em, Abby, you know, go try em. Tell me for inside comment section. Later.
hello guys this is the easiest of bonus soup recipes you can find anywhere very very easy all you need to do is add your protein and it's brought to your pot add your fish your crayfish your fish spice and season it to your taste add some water add your eel give that a very very good mix and then cover for it to come to a boil in a small bowl you're going to add your obono and palm oil then mix it up you're going to put that inside hot water for it to melt and while you wait for your soup to come to a boil then you're going to add the mixed obono and palm oil mix that cover it up and allow the obono to do its work when it has come to a boil just take a good look at that look at how good it looks so you're going to add your vegetables i use ugu leaf you can add scent leaf or any vegetable of your choice and then give that a very good mix and then your obono soup is ready guys this is very easy i mean it didn't even take me up to 20 minutes and the soup is ready and it tastes so good will you try this out let me know in the comments let me show you how I made this sweet chili garlic sauce. All you need is some fresh chili pepper. You're going to add that up in your blender and add enough water and blend it roughly. Then you're going to turn it into your pan and add some garlic paste. Then you're going to turn this, give it a very good stir to mix properly and then I added some sugar. The total cooking time of this was 15 minutes. While at it, you're going to mix some corn flour in warm water and then add that into the boiling pepper. After 15 minutes, you're going to allow this to cool down and then turn it into a glass container for storage. You can use this for marinating your protein, you can use it for eat bland food or you can use it to even prepare your meat stock tell me are you going to try this let me know in the comment section later if i served you this rice will you eat anyways let me show you how to make yours in my pan i added some salted butter and then i mixed my washed rice i washed this rice in hot water i left it in hot water for like five minutes and then i added some basil and some thyme and then mixed that up and then i added my chicken broth and allowed it to cook till it's properly dry be careful not to add so much chicken broth because you want your rice to not be soggy or too soft so when your rice is dry you're going to take it out and in the pan you're going to add some salted butter again and then add your vegetables any vegetables that you like i use carrots bell peppers sweet corn and green peas and then you add your rice and mix it up will you try this out or you still want to eat mine <laughs> let me know in the comment section i'll see you later hey guys so let's try this um chinese stir fry that i made it's very quick and easy and you would totally love it so in my pan i added some vegetable oil it was sesame oil to be precise i put some onions in my pan and then sauteed this for like two minutes and then i added my red and orange bell peppers and some carrots then i added some cayenne pepper for heat and my already pre-cooked chicken and then i'm going to be giving that a very good stay and now we are going to be preparing the sauce the star ingredients of this stir fry so in a plate i added some oyster sauce and then added some dark soy sauce and then i'm going to be adding one tablespoon of honey and then give this a very good mix and then pour it into my pot and then i mix some corn flour in water warm water and then pour it there and then added extra water because my sauce was becoming too thick i added extra cayenne pepper for heat and allow this to come to a boil and it's ready please note you don't need seasoning for this sauce tell me in the comment section if you're gonna try this later batch prepping my ingredients is what helps me get things done quickly in the kitchen and one of those ingredients is garlic it can be really annoying to take off the back anytime you want to use it so what i do is i get as much garlic i will need for the week or month and then heat it up for like two to three minutes to take off the back easily and then you can store it up like this or you can put it up in your blender and add some vegetable oil and blend it into a smooth paste and store it in your fridge tell me did you find this helpful i'll see you later spices that make sense to me 
kind pepper because me and noodles ground cinnamon for french toast white ground pepper if i don't want my food to be too spicy all purple seasoning for soups dark soy sauce for stir fry chili and garlic sauce for bland food sesame oil to saute my meat or for marinade my oyster sauce for marinade or for stir fry mix spices to spice up any food why are you making barbecue without barbecue spice please up your game pepper soup spice because why not fish seasoning bay leaves for mad jollof curry masala and curry for curry sauce i love the aroma not make gives never underrate time basil for my sauce coriander for flavor later chicken kebab anyone hi guys let me show you how i made this yummy chicken kebab first of all, you're going to get your chicken breast and you're going to cut them into cubes like this and then you're going to season it to taste i use some yaji spice seasoning cubes garlic and chicken spice and then i cut my vegetables i'm using yellow red green bell peppers onions and fresh tomatoes i also season my vegetables to give it a nice taste so you're going to place your chicken and your vegetables in your skewers and you should do that for all your chicken and at the end of the day this is what you should have so in an air fryer a grill pan or an oven you're going to cook your chicken allow it to cook i allowed my air fryer to do its work for like 20 minutes and our chicken kebab is ready guys this was so yummy and juicy let me know in the comment section if you're going to try this out i'll see you later Airflow was restricted after I finished making this Hilda's signature coconut rice. First, I boiled my protein with some onions, pepper, and seasoning for 7 minutes. In another pot, I added vegetable oil, sliced onions, coconut essence, blended pepper, seasoning, and some pepper soup spice to choke my neighbors. <laughs> I gave it a very good mix, and then I added my cooked protein and its stock some soft fish flakes, dry panla, freshly extracted coconut milk, and some crayfish. I gave that a good stir, test, and cover to come to a boil. When the mixture came to a boil, I added my washed rice and gave it a very good stir and then cover it up to cook. After a while, I uncovered the rice and turned it so that every part of the rice will cook properly and then cover it to cook again. After a few minutes, my neck-breaking coconut rice is ready. That's how my Odugu dashed me $1,000 after eating this rice. Before you ask me what did I add in my stew, watch this video to the very end. So in my pan, I added some vegetable oil, some onions, minced garlic, rosemary, thyme, and then I added my minced corned beef. I also added some soya spice and curry. I gave it a good stir. I mixed it up till I saw the oil floating and then I added my washed rice. I stirred that very well to mix in all the ingredients properly. I added some fresh pepper and some chicken stock I had left. I forgot to press record. That is why I do not have that video. Then I covered it up to cook, stun it so that every part of the rice cooks properly. And then I added some spring onions and green bell peppers. Covered to cook for four minutes and the dirty rice is dirty, guys. Make this for your odogu today and thank me later. Don't say I didn't do anything for you. You're welcome. Later. I made peanut butter at home and you, my recipients, can make yours too. All you need is your peanuts, aka ground nuts, and your blender. I added my peanuts into a blender and blend at high speed. You can use any quantity of peanuts and make any quantity of peanut butter that you would like. This is what my first blend looks like and then you're going to blend this again. This is also a reminder that registration for my food business class is ongoing and you still have an opportunity to pay 10,000 Naira to the 10th of April as opposed to 15,000 Naira. For more inquiries, kindly send me a DM. So this is what the second blend looks like. You can leave it at this if you like crunchiness in your peanut butter. But I'm going to be blending mine again. And then I added sugar to sweeten the butter. But you don't have to. You can also use honey or um, sugar syrup. And this is the final outcome of my peanut butter paste so you're going to store this up in a jar and store it in your fridge to when you're ready to use so my dear recipients let me know are you going to try this out let's know in the comment section and i'm going to see you later 
this breakfast option is going to get you hooked guys so first of all you're going to get a whole garlic add some vegetable oil and some seasoning wrap that in a foil paper and toast it in an oven for 10 minutes then you can use any bread i'm using this burger bread. i even use agaghe bread safe then when the um, garlic gets ready you're going to put that in a bowl this thing is very hot so be very very careful add some butter you can use a very good whipped butter added some more seasoning my fresh parsley and then i added some cheese the cheese is optional you don't have to add that so you're going to whip this very well to get your compound butter ready now you're going to put that spread on your bread be very generous with it and then i toast it in an oven for two to three minutes and then it came out having this very glossy look you can serve this with very fresh juice or smoothie will you try this out let me know in the comment section later hi guys let's make asun rice so as the name applies we'll be needing some goat's meat so you're going to cook your goat's meat with um some blended peppers some um, chopped onions and then season and then you're going to add water now the water this water you're using to cook this meat is what you use in making your rice so you have to like make it lighter don't make it so thick because you're still going to like season like later on to season the rice so your food doesn't get salty so you're going to use the stock water to make the rice and now you're going to fry your asun you're going to fry your goat's meat in some vegetable oil you're going to fry this for just like five minutes so that it doesn't get too dry right because you know you're eating it with rice and all that now that same vegetable oil we use in frying is what to use in making your rice now this pepper is mostly tatashe and then very small atarudo now when you're preparing your tatashe you have to remove the seeds right so it doesn't become bitter and too spicy and then you're going to add some small seasoning and some salt and then the total time for stir frying this um sauce is eight minutes so you're going to go in with some stock fish flakes and then you're going to go in with your panla fish smoked panla fish if you're not sure of how much seasoning you have in your rice you can season again so that you your food will be bland and then i added some pepper soup spice which is optional but i would advise you use it because it's going to give your food this nice flavor then you're going to add back your goat's meat inside the sauce and then you add your parboiled rice you're going to cook your parboiled rice to be very soft you know it's as soon rice it's not fried rice so your rice should be soft like going to becoming a little soggy right then you're going to mix it inside the sauce and then you're going to cover it up and allow it to cook for like two to three minutes if you're not sure please test your food as oh i always advise as you're cooking you taste your food just so that the maybe the seasoning is not enough you can always add more seasoning and the tatashe in this rice is also for color also if you don't like spicy food you should minimize the amount of pepper you use in making it but just know that asun rice is meant to be very spicy but if you don't like spiciness you can just reduce it and add more tatashe if you ask if you have any questions so you're going to ask me during question time later let's just get straight to the point in my pot i added some vegetable oil now i'm going to be sauteing my onions and i added some garlic i made this garlic paste myself i'm going to be dropping a recipe on how to um, make your own garlic paste at home. So I'm going to saute this for two minutes and then I'm frying my meat. The reason why I'm frying it is so that all the um, flavor of the meat is infused into the um, vegetable oil because this is the vegetable I'm going to be using to make my buka stew. From here, I'm going to be adding my pepper mix. I'm going to drop the description of what I use for my pepper mix in the caption. So check it now out. I'm going to be adding some seasoning powder, some thyme, all-purpose seasoning and whatever seasoning that sits well with you i'm going to be giving this a very good stir i'm going to cover it up to cook for 25 minutes the oil it's floating on top of the pepper mix so i'm going to stir this in very well and then i'm going to be adding my um, meat we don't broth. use plain water while cooking guys remember that so i'm going to mix this up and then i'm going to be putting back my protein my fried protein in beet and then i'm going to be adding my dried catfish from ogs foods ng she sells the best um 
processed foods in Nigeria. You should check her out. I'm going to allow this to cook for extra 10 minutes. Allow all the flavors and ingredients to infuse. And our buka stew is ready. Hope you like this. Let me know in the comment section later. Watch me make this fresh pineapple and ginger juice while I tell you the benefits and why you should be drinking it every day. Apart from it being a very sweet and fresh juice on the surface, it is packed with major boosts that are good for you. It has um, nutrients like vitamin A, C, beta carotene, and also a bunch of other power-packed vitamins and minerals that support a healthy immune system. Pineapple is a source of bromelain, an anti-inflammatory enzyme, while ginger is a natural inhibitor and it has numerous and anti-inflammatory mechanisms. Now tell me, will you be making some today? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you later. Getting cassava flour, aka fufu, from the local market has its cons and pros. And also, we worry so much about the hygiene. That's where OJ's food comes in. She specializes in neatly processed foods, and I got this cassava flour from her. All you need to do is cook it in warm water till it becomes solid. Then you serve with any soup of your choice. Easy peasy. Visit her page today for all your processed food stuff. She also does importation to the abroad people. So. My Japa boys and girls, she should be your plug. Try her out and thank me later. You see this very small tiny cutter, it makes so much sense to me. And it has one, two, three, four, five compartments. And I'm going to show you how I use all of them. The first one is a scrader. I use it, it's a peeler. You can use it to, to peel your potatoes, your carrots. So I'm going to be showing you how you use it for my carrots. So you can easily use it to scrape your carrots, peel off your potatoes, the back of your potatoes, um, cucumber, etc. Now the second one is my favorite. You can use this um, particular tip to cut your carrots or your potatoes too and to give you this shape. I use it for my stir fry and it's so useful guys now the third part it's for carrots so you can use it for carrots if you want to get this shape you can use it for any other um, vegetable that you want to cut then this one is for grating maybe to grate your um garlic your nutmeg and to give you this consistency get to this cutter it's very small but super useful in the kitchen i'll see you later you all know how much I advocate for soft life in the kitchen and ChangeX Foods makes it even more easier. They have peeled beans for easy fix moi moi or akara. I'm sure you know how long it takes to do this by yourself at home. With this cocoyam powder, I can easily make my oha soup without stress. You can also use it to thicken any soup. All purpose seasoning for all soups. Use this pepper soup spice to choke your neighbors. Cutting vegetables for me is not fun. Now ChangeX Food provides dry ugu leaves for the soft life. This ogiri is perfect for oha soup or father sauce etc mix spices to season any food at all curry masala for curry goat and chicken curry sauce why will you be making barbecue without the barbecue spice from changex stop that bad character this 2023 later hey guys so let's make some burgers so first you need minced beef you can buy it from the supermarket or you can make yours at home so you're going to add your breadcrumbs. You can also make your breadcrumbs at home, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about burger. <laughs> so you add your um, bread. You can actually buy breadcrumbs from the supermarket to so like a very big supermarket. You can find it. Then I added some garlic powder. I added some mixed spices. You're pretty much just going to spice it up. Then I added some um, soy sauce. I added some oyster sauce, some ketchup. Um, chili pepper so you're going to mix this oh you're supposed to add in you're going to break two eggs inside this and mix it properly i actually forgot to put it at this point but oh, i'm supposed to uh -huh. so you're breaking two eggs into yes it's, the egg is going to like make it easy for you to mix you see now it's now easier for me to like put everything together and it's going to help it like help your mixed beef to be put together and you can easily mold it without stress 
so you just spice it up the reason for the ketchup is to add that extra sweetness but if you don't like ketchup you can skip it but i would advise you put it because it gives this very sweetness in your beef patty so now you're going to grease a pan you grease your palm and grease a pan because you are going to mold this so you mold this very well and and shape it into like give it a round shape if you have a cutter you can use a cutter to give it a very nice shape and also the size of your beef patty should be like the size of your bread you can buy your burger bread from supermarkets or you can if you know how to bake you can bake it like make i think this class has a um, bread res recipe so yes you learn how to make that so you shaping it very well and put it in the tray and set aside now we are going to make our cream for the burger so this is mayonnaise i added some ketchup oh um, i added too much ketchup on na onye jikash they disturb me anyway so you add your mayonnaise add your ketchup i added some garlic and chili sauce that's optional but you can add it then if you don't if you can't find lemon you can use um ginger sorry if you can't find um vinegar you can use lemon juice so you're going to give this a very good mix i added too much um ketchup so it's giving a darker color than it's supposed to be but um so I, that's why i added um extra mayonnaise so i gave that a good mix you see it became lighter so now please don't mind this my bread though when you're getting your burger bread get the bread that is very very fine and smooth and everything please so you're going to cut that bread into two um equal parts you're going to put some butter in your pan and then like um toast it for like one or two minutes then you're going to add some more vegetable oil and heat up your beef patty so you're going to cook it for like four to five minutes so that it cooks well this my um this my beef I already like grilled it before blending because i i made my my beef at home so if you bought it from the store you cook it like longer for like eight to ten minutes then you're going to add your cheese slices on the beef so it can melt now it's time to put everything together so at the bottom part then you're going to spread your cream you can use this as a salad like a salad cream too I don't give an update so you can use this as a salad cream too so you're going to add your lettuce then you add your this is a two um a two layered beef burger so that is why i added two of the beef patty then you're going to cream the last parts of it and then put it on top i made two burgers this burger is actually really nice. Forget about how the bread is looking, but this is so creamy and very, very joisy. So, yeah, that is that for the burger. And this is a final burger. <laughs> so, guys, questions time. You ask me questions.
let's make chicken alfredo pasta shall we so first you're going to get your chicken breast and we're going to season this i use some curry masala from change spices i use some cayenne pepper some garlic powder and normal seasoning i just tried my best not to like over you know season it so this is like just like basic seasoning so any basic seasoning that you normally use you can use it and then i added some vegetable oil this is to lock up all the flavors in fact anytime you're doing a marinade or you're trying to marinate any protein always add vegetable oil it will help you to lock up the moisture inside your protein now you're going to add some vegetable oil in your pan and pan fry it till it's nice and brown like this please non-stick pan and then to cook your pasta you're going to boil some water and then add some salt and allow it to cook al dente then you're going to um add the oil in the pan is the oil i use in frying my my protein then i'm going to add some butter and then some chopped onions then i'm going to um add some blended pepper this is for nigerian taste but <laughs> so you're going to fry that till it's fragrant till you start perceiving the garlic and the onions and all and then you go in with your cooking cream i'm going to send pictures of this cooking cream so you can see the brands to buy but basically any cooking cream is is nice so i added um some seasoning you will need to taste this thing to know if it's tasty so you can season and then you add your your pasta now when i said al dente like you cook it enough like soft enough but still firm like don't cook it to be like too soft and the cooking time for your pasta is like eight minutes i also added some pasta water and some of the marinade from the protein the chicken so you're going to allow this to cook for like two to three minutes and then i added some more um blended pepper some black pepper and some fresh parsley all this is just for you know a fizzy and plating one thing you should also learn from me in this class is plating so you now add your cooked chicken and serve you can choose to serve it in this um skillet or a bowl ask me question hey guys let's make some pancakes for breakfast so first of all you're going to measure in two cups of all-purpose flour into a bowl and then one cup of sugar one and a half spoon of baking powder and then you're going to mix that and set aside in another bowl you're going to add one full cup of coconut milk some flavor any flavor of your choice but i'm using banana flavor you can use vanilla flavor going with some two eggs and melted butter and now you're going to mix the wet ingredients with your dry ingredients the purpose of this pancake is to infuse other flavors into your pancake you know that's why we are using the coconut milk instead of regular milk so i added a little more water so that my butter will be lighter and then grill grease your pan and cook your pancakes and guys trust me if you try this you know go try regular pancakes again let me they tell you so you're gonna serve this and enjoy with some hot chocolate later hey guys let's make some juicy coconut rice shall we so first of all you're going to cook your chicken I would have said chicken is optional but use chicken cook it exactly like this so you're going to add some chopped onion some seasoning and some blended pepper so you just want this to come to a boil like because you need the broth okay so then in your pot you're going to go in with some vegetable oil and then you're going to go in with some chopped onions you're going to stir fry this for like one minute and then you're going with some coconut flavor i would have said this coconut flavor is optional but please use this coconut flavor it changes the game guys it changes the game to 100 and then you're going to also add some pepper soup spice it's optional but and it's, but it's basically for flavor so you can choose to add that so you're going to stir fry this till it becomes fragrant and then you're going to go with some blended pepper and some seasoning you're going to season this very well enough to cook your rice and then you're going to go in with your chicken and its broth you're going to use all the water for the chicken and also the broth and also it's also dependent on the amount of rice you're cooking too so you're going to add that in and then going with your freshly extracted coconut milk you can also use store-bought coconut milk if you can't extract it then going with your smoked panla fish some um stockfish flakes and um crayfish powder please be careful the amount of crayfish powder you're using that might be another recipe for disaster so mix that in and allow this to come to a boil 
and then you're going to go in with your um partly cooked rice like do not allow the rice to be 100 percent cooked before cooking it in fast five minutes max that you cook the rice so also another thing to note don't abandon your rice or any of your food anytime you're cooking so always constantly check on your rice and flip and turn like this this is so that every part of your rice cooks sometimes when you cook without checking on it you've discovered that some part of the rice is cooked while the other part is not so when you flip and turn it helps th them to stop that also your rice will go burn go burn so don't tell me that the rice go burn and then allow it to dry and your juicy coconut rice is ready if you have any questions ask me during questions time Hey recipients, so this is a sign that you should indulge in a fruit fast. Not necessarily fruit fast though, but inculcating fruits in your lifestyle is a healthy habit. Now, I have a 21 days fruit fast ebook where you will see this particular recipe and 24 more recipes at a giveaway price. Yes, guys. So this book will serve as a guide for beginners who wants to indulge or even if you want to lose some weight fruit eating is a sure banger if that's what you want to achieve to get the ebook click the link on my bio to get your copy or send me a dm to get yours i hope you enjoyed watching this video and i'm going to see you later
Hi recipients, let's make this yummy fish burger together. So first we're going to prepare our batter. In a bowl, I added some flour, I added some baking powder, some garlic powder, black pepper, and seasoning. You can use any seasoning of your choice. And then I added some sugar. I'm going to give this a mix to incorporate everything together. And then I added some Sprite. You can use any other soda or you can even use smell of ice if you can. I added a little more water and then mix this up. Your batter is supposed to be lightweight. Now this is my fish fillet. Fish fillet has no bone. I made this one at home but you can buy it in any supermarket store. So you're going to rub your fish fillet in flour and then dip it inside your batter. And then you're going to fry this in hot oil till it's nice and brown. This is a subtle reminder that registration for my food aid business class is still ongoing and you still have the opportunity to pay 10,000 Naira as opposed to 15,000 Naira. For more information, please kindly send me a DM. Now you're going to layer your burger bread with some mayo sauce, cabbage, fish patty, one layer of cheese strips, another layer of your fish patty, another layer of cheese, and lastly, your burger bread. Let me know, recipients. Will you try this? I'll see you later. Hi, guys. So let's make oha soup. Oha soup is an, a Nigerian Igbo soup. So we're going to be starting with some proteins. I'm using goat meat. Now I'm going to be adding my stockfish flakes. You can use stockfish head if you like. And this seed you're seeing is Uzuza, Uziza seed. You know the Uziza leaf? Yes, this is Uziza seed. So I'm blending that with my yellow pepper and then I seasoned well. I added some water and then I'm going to place this on fire to cook till the meat is tender. So that's Uziza seed. You know the Uziza leaf? Yes, so that is the seed and it's really really nice it's optional but you don't have to add it um so i added extra water and then i added some seasoning and extra pepper you have to blend your pepper to be very soft because we don't want to see pepper like in the soup so this is my ofo now you can either use ofo or you use cocoa yam the, you you boil some cocoa yam till it's soft and then pound it but if you don't have the energy to boil um cocoa yam and pound it you can use offal you just need to put the palm oil inside the offal and mix it very well so when my water came to a boil i added some crayfish i added my panla fish and extra seasoning to taste now i introduced my mixed offal and palm oil into the pot now you're going to mix this Mix this till you start seeing that buttery thick consistency. This soup gets thick the longer you cook it, so you don't have to cook it very long. I seasoned it again, and then I added some uziza leaves, and then I gave that a good mix. Then I added my, my oha leaves. These oha leaves are hand cut. We don't use knives to cook, cut it. You cut it if the leaves are very big, but if they are not big, you can just use them like that. Just wash and use them like that i put my off um oha leaves in two batches and then gave that a good mix i allowed this to sit and cook for a few minutes and my oha soup is ready like very very easy so guys tell me did you find this helpful if you like this video please don't forget to drop a comment a like and share see you guys later
hi recipients so i'm going to show you how i made this yummy crunchy but soft yamarita so you're going to get your yam your yam sizes should be this thick so you're going to slice them up like this and then we are going to boil this yam you're going to boil it till it's soft then i added some salt and some sugar this sugar is optional but if you want extra sweetness you can add the um, sugar then i added some vegetable oil and i'm going to allow this to come to a boil so my yam is soft now i'm going to take them out and then this as this is flour and then i'm going to add some basil cayenne pepper um soya spice and whatever spice you want to add then mix it up then i mixed three eggs so you're going to put your yams like this in the floor like rub them up then add them to the egg and then do this procedure twice so that when you fry it the um the floor and the egg does not wash off so you still have some layers left so now i'm going to fry them to fry it till it gets um golden brown like this and you know it's ready you see that it's crunchy on the outside but super soft on the inside you can eat this with anything i'm eating mine with pepper sauce so tell me are you going to try this and you love this i'm gonna see you later let me know in the comments i've had this carrot in my fridge for four weeks i'm not capping you can see that the water is not so clear if you are like me that likes to have vegetables handy at home especially if you want to just make sharp sharp fried rice or maybe noodles or spaghetti then this hack is for you obviously you're going to get carrots you're going to wash and you're going to use this our beautiful kitchen multi-purpose tool to scrape out all the bad parts all the very very ugly parts of the carrot and you're going to cut the bottom part the head and the bottom of the carrot your carrot should look this fine so you're going to get you're going to wash again and get a jar fill it up with water and then you're going to transfer your carrot into the water your jar should have a cover obviously so yeah it's that simple so for the ones you've had in your fridge all you need to do is just change the water and like replace it with very fresh water and put it in your fridge not freezer so tell me will you try this i'll see you later hi guys let's make some chicken casserole for this recipe you'll be needing very soft chicken so it's preferable you use chicken breast or chicken thighs but make sure your chicken is very soft so i'm just basically seasoning with normal seasoning cubes your normal maggi cubes and some black pepper and any other seasoning you might have like curry powder then i mel melted some butter in a pan and then i went in with my chicken so you're going to flip the chicken after every three minutes so that both sides of the chicken will cook well so but if you want to know how like if your chicken is properly cooked allow it to fry for eight to ten minutes so you be sure that your chicken is properly cooked and there is no blood and not raw then you're going to go in with um, some chopped onions and garlic and then some blended pepper for nigerian taste but you know this this meal is french so um you you want to add extra pepper for nigerian taste but then i went in with some cooking cream and no you cannot use coconut milk for this recipe because when you use coconut milk that's something else you're making and then i went in with some more seasoning and some more black pepper for extra heat for the nigerian taste but and then you're going to stir this in allow to come to a simmer when i say something to come to a simmer you allow this to come to a slow boil on low heat right so you keep stirring and then you're going to add back your cooked chicken 
and allow it to cook you can add um vegetables like bell peppers fresh parsley or any vegetable that you normally like right but i do not always like to use so much vegetable for my chicken casserole so you're going to allow this to cook for another two to three minutes and your sauce is ready and you know i would always plate i know you would say plating is a problem because of utensils no this what i'm using now is all these takeaway plates that they sell 150 or 200 naira so you can just get one and do your plating so if you have any questions ask me during questions time hi guys so for your chinese fried rice you're going to start by adding some vegetable oil in your pan and you're going to scramble some eggs it's also dependent on how much rice you're making i'm making two cups of rice so i scrambled three eggs you're going to scramble it to, for it to look like this then you're going with your already cooked rice it can be day old rice or you cook it freshly anyone counts and you can use any rice for this recipe basmati rice any rice at all then i went in with my cut sausages carrots bell peppers green bell peppers and some spring onions and i went in with some corn and kidney beans so you're going to stir fry this like i said before secrets to making a mad fried rice like a mad looking fried rice is in frying so this is chinese fried rice obviously and we don't need seasoning even the pineapple fried rice you don't need seasoning this soy sauce and oyster sauce is already very salty right but just in case your nigerian test board is very strong you can just add one cube of normal seasoning and also you can add pepper cayenne pepper or normal blended pepper for heat you know now as nigerian that we are because i also added um some um what is what they call them blended pepper in here because i mean i know feature of this guy i know feature of this food without pepper god no allow. so i mixed it very well obviously and the total time for frying this rice was um 10 to 15 minutes so from the time you start with um, frying the rice with the egg to when the rice is done should be 15 minutes so you can time yourself so guys ask me questions hi guys so let's make a um, pineapple fried rice but first i'm going to show you how to make the bowl just in case you want to know how to make it so you get a whole pineapple and you're going to cut it into two halves and when you're cutting it you cut it till it gets to the head of the pineapple so when you're getting your own pineapple like get the one that has the head that the head has not been cut out what they even call that thing the spike that is always at, on the on top of the head the hair it's better you get that one so after cutting it into two halves you're going to use a knife and cut lines into it like this vertically and horizontally make sure you cut deep into it like not don't pierce be careful not to pierce the like the back of the pineapple like cut it in a way that if you use a fork or a spoon you can like easily bring it out right so you're going to do that for both halves if you did it very well your fork should be able to bring it out easily like this so you're going to do it for both halves so yeah After bringing out all the cubes, you're not going to use a knife and like scrape the sides because you want it to like have a very smooth, you know, smooth inner surface. So you're going to use your knife to scrape out all the pineapple from all the edges like this. Then you can now turn that into a bowl. You can decide to use it. You can decide to extract the juice from this. As in fact nothing is wrong with it you can like extract the juice and you know you have pineapple juice then you're going to use your spoon and scrape it like scrape out all the pineapples from the walls of the plate because you want your plate to be free of every um pineapple chunks right this is not compulsory but if you want to have that tropical you know five star restaurants feel then you have you can do it so this is what you get so i did it for both halves and that is that so now in your pan you're going to go in with some regular vegetable oil then you're going to scramble some eggs the quantity of eggs you use depends on the quantity of rice you're making so i'm making like two cups of rice so i used three eggs so you're going to scramble this very one then you're going to go in with your cooked rice you can use day old rice for this recipe 
or you can just cook fresh rice so you're going to stir fry this for like two to three minutes inside the egg and then you go in with your veggies i didn't use any carrots or red bell pepper because i wanted my pineapple fried rice to have this yellowish greenish you know tropical feel so i just use corn um green peas green bell peppers and red kidney beans you see the like the color it gives like this tropical greenery you get so you're going to stir fry the secret of fried rice is always frying it then you're going to go in with your pineapple chunks if you like you can add the liquid of the pineapple but i won't teach you what i can't eat because <laughs> you know and you're going to go in with your chinese sauce your um, dark soy sauce you're going to go in with your oyster sauce and then you're going to go in with some sesame oil of course and then you're going to like stir fry this like i was saying the secret to making fried rice is like in the frying so you're going to like keep frying it for like five minutes in fact the whole frying process should be like eight to ten minutes so your rice is dry and not soggy do you get so you're going to be patient enough to stir fry in fact you can even time yourself like from when you started doing the egg you can like time it for like 10 minutes you get so yeah and that's that ask me questions this green sauce is something you should have in your corner to make it you need some green atarado fresh parsley some cilantro fresh minced leaves some vegetable oil and warm water the vegetable oil is actually optional you can just use water so you're going to roughly blend it like this and then i added some onions some garlic and ginger and then blended it up together then in another pan i added some vegetable oil some onions and spring onions and some garlic powder to infuse some flavor into the vegetable oil now you're going to cook your so your mixture till the oil starts floating like this and you know that your sauce is ready so you can use this as marinade or you can use it as a dip tell me will you try this let me know in the comments later hey guys let's make some juicy coconut rice shall we so first of all you're going to cook your chicken i would have said chicken is optional but use chicken cook it exactly like this so you're going to add some chopped onion some seasoning and some blended pepper so you just want this to come to a boil like because you need the broth okay so then in your pot you're going to go in with some vegetable oil and then you're going to go in with some chopped onions you're going to stir fry this for like one minute and then you're going with some coconut flavor i would have said this coconut flavor is optional but please use this coconut flavor it changes the game guys it changes the game to a hundred and then you're going to also add some pepper soup spice it's optional but and it's, but it's basically for flavor so you can choose to add that so you're going to stir fry this till it becomes fragrant and then you're going to go in with some blended pepper and some seasoning you're going to season this very well enough to cook your rice and then you're going to go in with your chicken and its broth you're going to use all the water for the chicken and also the broth and also it's also dependent on the amount of rice you're cooking too so you're going to add that in and then going with your freshly extracted coconut milk you can also use store-bought coconut milk if you can't extract it then going with your smoked panla fish some um stock fish flakes and um crayfish powder please be careful the amount of crayfish powder you're using that might be another recipe for disaster so mix that in and allow this to come to a boil and then you're going to go in with your um partly cooked rice like do not allow the rice to be 100 percent cooked before cooking it in fast five minutes max that you cook the rice so also another thing to note don't abandon your rice or any of your food anytime you're cooking so always constantly check on your rice and flip and turn like this this is so that every part of your rice cooks sometimes when you cook without checking on it you've discovered that some part of the rice is cooked while the other part is not so when you flip and turn it helps them to stop that also your rice will go born go born so don't tell me that the rice go born and then allow it to dry and your juicy coconut rice is ready if you have any question ask me during questions time hi guys so let's make some grilled turkey this turkey recipe i'm about to give you is the holy grail of grilled turkeys so you're going to get your turkey and then you're going to cut in incisions like this so this is for you know all the flavors the seasoning to seep into it so after that you're going to 
you're going to cook this um turkey no turkey is always stronger than chicken so you're going to cook it first with some onions you're gonna season and then add some pepper you're going to cook this like till it's 85 percent done so that should take like 10 to 15 minutes so you're going to put it on fire and allow it to cook then to prepare the marinade for this um chicken you need some yellow peppers you need some red um yellow atarudo that one they call yellow habanero pepper then some red pepper some chopped onions some garlic ginger and then this marinade you also have to like season it very well i normally use some curry spice some all-purpose seasoning some barbecue seasoning and normal seasoning the aim is for your turkey to be delicious so season season it very well and then you're gonna add some vegetable oil obviously to like um lock in the flavors and then you're going to blend your peppers to be very smooth and then i added some extra seasoning now when your turkey is done you're going to that your marinade that you've prepared you're going to like mix it very well with the turkey like generously don't be stingy with the marinade right and then you're now going to cook this in your oven or air fryer i'm using an air fryer so you're going to add your turkey inside the air fryer and this my air fryer has preset buttons so if you don't have a preset button cook your meat for 35 minutes at 200 degrees celsius another thing when you are cooking your meat do not abandon it always check on it constantly you can add extra marinade on it and flip it so that both sides of the turkey will be well cooked and all the marinade you know the whole um, turkey will be equally delicious equally cooked you know so don't just put your meat your your your, your barbecue inside the oven and abandon it always check check on it so after 35 minutes your your grilled turkey is, is ready that's pretty much it the secret is in the marinade and this is how i served it it went with my food box hi guys let's make some butter chicken curry sauce shall we so first we're going to marinate our chicken with some unsweetened greek yogurt i'm going to send a picture of the greek yogurt that i use you're going to season with some curry masala some um cayenne pepper some garlic powder and normal curry powder you can also add any spice or any seasoning you like in your chicken you're going to give this a very good mix and you're going to keep it aside to marinate now in your pot you're going to add some vegetable oil some onions and some garlic just like just the way i cut it in this size and then i added some bay leaves and some cinnamon powder you're going to cook that for one minute and then you're going to go in with some tomatoes some bell pepper some yellow habanero pepper and some atarudo so you're going to stir this in you're going to stir this in and then add some water you're going to cover this up to cook for 15 minutes you want to make a marinade for this sauce so after 15 minutes you're going to put in all the contents of the pot including the water into a blender and blend it into a very smooth paste then you're going to turn it inside a bowl and set aside now in another pan you're going to add some vegetable oil enough to cook the sauce and then you're going to go in with that your marinated chicken you're going to cook this chicken till it's very nice and brown that will take you about 10 to 12 minutes to ensure that your chicken is properly cooked and now for this recipe please always use chicken breast because chicken breast is very soft and it does not have any bone right and it will cook faster so after that you're going to add your blended marinade you're going to add everything then you're going to go in with some butter i'm going to send a picture of the butter too that i use you're going to allow the butter to melt in you're going to mix in the butter into the sauce and then you're going to go in with your cooking cream i think i already sent a picture of this cooking cream so yeah you're going to add a very generous amount of the cooking cream and then you're going to mix this very well and allow it to cook for five minutes so that the butter melts in properly and the cooking cream melts in 
taste and then add seasoning if need be and you can also add some more pepper for nigerian taste but if you like spicy food and your sauce is ready you can serve this with rice or any um pasta or any um carbohydrate you know i'll always garnish so ask me questions if there's questions <sighs> hey guys let's make some pancakes for breakfast so first of all you're going to measure in two cups of all-purpose flour into a bowl and then one cup of sugar one and a half spoon of baking powder and then you're going to mix that and set aside in another bowl you're going to add one full cup of coconut milk some flavor any flavor of your choice but i'm using banana flavor you can use vanilla flavor going with some two eggs and melted butter and then you're going to mix the wet ingredients with your dry ingredients the purpose of this pancake is to infuse other flavors into your pancake you know that's why we are using the coconut milk instead of regular milk so i added a little more water so that my butter will be lighter and then grill grease your pan and cook your pancakes and guys trust me if you try this you know go try regular pancakes again let me they tell you so you're gonna serve this and enjoy with some hot chocolate later hi guys let's make some crisps chicken burger so first we're going to get our chicken breast you can get this from the supermarket so that you get the one that has no bones at all so you're going to season with some curry powder some mixed spices some all-purpose seasoning in fact basically your favorite seasoning curry paprika cayenne pepper normal seasoning cubes you're going to want to season this very well and then i went in with some vegetable oils to lock in the flavors into the chicken and then you're going to rub in all the seasoning on both sides of the chicken till it looks like this like you know you've seasoned it very well then you're going to get some cornflakes and you're going to you can either blend them or you can just use your hands to like break them like this and then you're going to season it's optional but i'll advise you season i season with some mixed spices some cayenne pepper some seasoning and a little salt now i'm going to mix this with my hands and then set aside then in another bowl i put in two eggs now you're going to um put your chicken into the egg and then coat it with the cornflakes this is going to give your chicken that very crispy feeling and then you can cook it in your air fryer that should take about 35 minutes on 200 degrees celsius then for the may the burger sauce i'm using mayonnaise black pepper and white vinegar you can replace the white vinegar with lemon juice then now it's time to plate our burger so you're going to rub the cream on the down part of the burger add your lettuce going with your ch chicken fillet and then top it off with the top layer of the burger and it is ready this recipe is very easy but it's super crisp and delicious <gasps> ask me any question you have during questions time hey guys let's make some meatball pasta shall we so first of all we are going to make our meatballs so this is minced beef and breadcrumbs you can check my page for the recipe to make breadcrumbs then you're going to go in with some eggs like two eggs and then going with oyster sauce and ketchup and then you're going to season now the aim is for you to season these meatballs to be very sweet as per nigerian taste buds okay so season it as much as you can add some curry powder add some cayenne pepper or paprika and then you're going to give this a very good mix and set aside now you're going to grease a tray or a flat plate like this and then grease your palm because you're going to be making the grease ball so you're going to cut the minced beef and then round it like this and we are going to head um towards frying so you're going to add some vegetable oil in your pan and then go in with your rounded meatballs and you're going to keep flipping the meatballs carefully on both sides so that everything cooks properly and it's nice and brown then you take it out of the pan now the vegetable oil we use in frying the beef is what we are going to use in making our sauce so you're going to add some onions and saute for a minute and then go in with some um, tomato paste and then go in with some pepper mix and then you're going to season this with some curry and some 
seasoning cubes before you add your pepper mix make sure that your tomato paste is properly cooked for at least eight to ten minutes so that it's not tangy or sour so you're going to allow that to cook then you're going to introduce your meatballs into the sauce and you're going to slow cook this for about five minutes this is so that the flavors in the meatball will infuse into the sauce and the sauce into the meatballs then you're going to add your pasta cook al dente i already explained what ad al dente means like cooking your pasta to be soft enough to be eaten but still very firm and not soggy so you're going to mix this up and allow the um pasta to soak up the juice of the sauce to know when to know the proper time to cook your pasta for nigerian pasta the pastas we buy in nigeria i cook my pasta for eight minutes max 10 minutes so that you have extra time especially when you're making pasta like this so you have extra time for your pasta to still cook right so your pasta is not soggy and looks like pounded yam anyway so when your your pasta is done of course you know i'm gonna plate if there's one thing you learn from me in this class you should all you should learn how to plate by the end of this class this pasta is balls. ask me questions to make your coconut pasta so first i'm starting with my chicken i'm going to marinate it with some soya spice some seasoning some red um cayenne pepper and some vegetable oil you can use any spice that you like or you have so you're going to mix this in the reason for the oil is so that it straps in the um seasoning you get so that it straps in the whole seasoning into the chicken so after meals in it like this you're gonna pan fry it please use a non-stick pan okay so you'll be turning both sides after every five minutes so that every part of the chicken cooks so this is the coconut oil coconut milk that i use so um in a pan you're going to put, put some butter and then some chopped onions saute there for a minute and then i added some blended pepper i use green peppers and yellow peppers you can use red pepper but this green pepper gives it this nice color <laughs> so you're gonna add your coconut milk i i didn't use so much because of the quantity of pasta i was using so if you want it to be more if you depend on the quantity of spaghetti you're using then you use the quantity you put in the quantity of coconut milk but i do not always like mine to be too creamy but anyways and just use your discretion okay then i added some more red pepper and some chili flakes and then i'm going to give that a mix and then now i'm gonna add my um 85 percent cooked pasta you know because of the kind of pasta we have in nigeria do not allow your pasta to cook till it's done just cook it for like six to eight minutes that is how i cook my pasta so that you still have some cooking time and your pasta does not become soggy so i'm going to mix in it like that into the coconut milk and then i add some bell peppers and carrots and then give that a very good mix so i added more seasoning because it wasn't given <laughs> so i added some seasoning and then my pasta is ready so another thing about this glass is your plating has to be good so if there's anything you know you have to learn also you have to learn good plating so this is me plating my pasta feeling all fancy and shit so yeah that's pretty much it for the coconut milk pasta so ask me questions when it's question time see you later hi guys so um for the bole and titus fish so we are going to be making our special sauce and this special sauce consists of yellow pepper red atarudo garlic um onions and tatashi you can add herbs like parsley thyme etc etc et so you won't use water to blend this so you will use vegetable oil any vegetable oil of your choice and use normal vegetable oil and then you will blend it to be very very smooth after smoothing it you're going to um season it very well i season it properly with um normal seasoning 
um pepper soup spice barbecue spice you can go wild with the seasoning you get so make it to be very very sweet you can also add salt then you're going to prepare your plantain and then you're going to add some sprinkle some vegetable oil and then that sauce in here you're going to rub it into the rub it very girl make it for sweet you get me then prepare your titus fish and then pour in the same sauce you're going to rub it into every part of the titus fish the like the holes in the fish the mouth of the fish like rub it in make sure you rub it in very well so that the um seasoning everything will moisture and you can even sprinkle some seasoning like normal seasoning on the body of the fish the purpose is for your fish to be very very sweet then preheat your oven or air fryer or grill outside grill whatever you have then you're going to grill your plantain and your fish for 20 minutes so this is what my grill plantain looks like i made this for it was supposed to be for a food tray so um this is what it looks like guys this thing sweet die so ask me questions when it's